Welcome to Chapter 5, Lesson 1 on Prohibition in the United States. So, Prohibition? Prohibition. It's the opposite of amateur ambition. A professional ambition. Yeah. Uh, it's where you prohibit things, and uh, prohibition, you can prohibit anything, but at this time they're prohibiting alcohol. And we talked about the temperance movement and why alcohol was a problem for women and children. But there are lots of groups that Not because they drink it, but because the husband... Because of someone else drinking it. Yeah. So lots of groups are kind of coming together, some of them with good purposes, like women who want to reduce spousal abuse, and some groups like... Uh, actually, the KKK came out uh, in favor of prohibition. Yeah. They did. Uh, because they didn't want... Uh, well, it's hard to drink through those hoods. <laughs> that was the problem. Because it's not... You don't drink beer with a straw. Uh the KKK came out against alcohol because they wanted to promote a myth that uh, alcohol made black people, uh, black men, attack white women, which is not true, but that's what the kind of thing they were promoting. Do you know uh, a myth is a female moth? Hmm? A myth? Myth moth? Is a female moth a myth? Okay. Myth is. Myth is? There. So all these groups come together and they decide to. Uh, and alcohol, it's promoted because uh, uh, as a war effort during World War One to say save on uh, grain for the boys who were fighting. And they, were, they passed the 18th Amendment. To help you remember that, though, we have a little mnemonic for you. Uh, we have a little Homer Simpson-looking dude that... Uh, he's back here. Yeah. So he's kind of on his side. So like this. Right there. Uni. One. Eight, eighteen, so eighteen. Come on. And he's drunk, as you can yeah. tell. So he's passed out on his side. That's why it's a one and then eight. Uh, and the eighteenth amendment is what prohibits alcohol. And uh, to help you remember what it does, we just think of, you know, our little dude up there. He's got an upset tummy. He needs to take some tums and tums. T U M S. T U M S. Prohibition makes it illegal to transport. Use, here we go, manufacture, and sell alcohol. So you can't do those things. Uh, that's what it does. Now, how does that work out? It doesn't. It doesn't work out very well. So some, some things happen because of uh, prohibition. And so the next half of the page, the bottom part, these are the results of prohibition. So what happens when you make alcohol illegal? Well, people don't like it. People it's don't like, obey. It's like, it's like drugs. All of and a sudden you make people want to get it still, and people want to make it still, and then they want to sell it still. Our mnemonic here is boss. And just think of like a mafia boss or a gang uh, boss. Uh, that boss, B-O-S-S, -S, he's uh, kind of a symbol for what happens because of prohibition. We have a rise in uh, crime. That fits in with B-O-S-S. So what happens because of prohibition? Well, first, people bootleg. And bootlegging is where you smuggle alcohol in your boot or whatever. Uh, not little in your boot, but it, it kind of starts off with that kind of level of smuggling. But as it gets You'll bigger and bigger, that. You'll learn you about You smuggle it. it in larger things, and so you are bootlegging alcohol. So people start making it anyway. And uh, that leads to... So people start using it anyway. That's bootlegging. Uh, Organized crime is uh, organizing the, the bootlegging of it and taking it to speakeasies. That's the S. So speakeasies are the places where the bootlegged alcohol ends up. Organized crime runs it. Man, you don't do that. No. Speakeasy. Uh, but that rise in crime and the fact that people are still using it and they haven't stopped using it means they didn't accomplish its goal of ending alcohol. Crime was going up. And so they end up saying, forget it, forget it, our bad, uh, the nation needs a drink, and so they repeal prohibition with the 21st Amendment. So it was stopped by the 21st Amendment. There we go. So, hey, let's watch. Bye, everybody. Hello again, and welcome to History and You. I'm your host, 
Thaddeus Stevens, and today we're talking to Alan Capone, the grandson of a bootlegger. Welcome, Mr. Capone. Oh, thank you. Now, your grandfather was a bootlegger. This was during Prohibition, which was basically the outlawing of alcohol in the United States. Please tell our audience what a bootlegger is. Oh, yes, doll. That was my grandfather. His name was really Al, but when I was little, I couldn't call him Al, so I called him Dow. Now everybody calls him Dow. He's my grandchildren, even though he's dead. And the bootleggers. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, let me read this little article I got. It says, uh, on the 17th century, people had boots that went really high. The top of the boot was called a bootlegger, I guess, because it was against the leg. And people used to hide all sorts of things in there. Knives, guns, peppermint sticks. I'm just joking about the peppermint sticks. <laughs> so when people started hiding small bottles of alcohol in their boots, the people who sold it became known as bootleggers. Why the guys who sold the boots and the alcohol were called bootleggers? And the people who drank the alcohol and put it in their boots weren't... I don't know. I, I don't understand it. That's an interesting point. Also, I can never remember if the 17th century is the 1700s or the 1800s. Do you know what I mean? Now, you mentioned Prohibition. Prohibition, of course, was the 18th Amendment that outlawed the transporting, use, manufacture, and selling of alcoholic beverages. Oh, so you could buy it, but you couldn't sell it. Well, yes, you can't buy it if no one's selling it. Well, what if it's just laying there on the ground? Can you buy it then? So you mentioned the 18th Amendment prohibition. How did the alcohol get to a lot of the people? Well, these bootleggers, they got organized. They called it organized crime because it was crime and it was, it was not organized. So later on, they called it organized crime too. I guess before that, they didn't call it organized. They might have called it disorganized, but I don't really know because I wasn't living yet. Yes, yes, but if the crime was organized and they were selling a lot of alcohol, how did they give it to the people? Oh, speak easy. Well, if they organized... No, 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 that's, oh, uh, that's what the places were called, where they got the alcohol. Speak easy. I see, I see. Well, wouldn't that be illegal to sell it then? Duh, of course it would. But organized crime, they paid off people. They paid off the judges, the police, the police chief, dogs, cats, whatever was involved, they paid them off. Everything got paid off. So I don't understand. Why did they start prohibition in the first place? Well, there was this movement called temperance uh, movement, yeah. And it was this movement uh, by these women who got together and they wanted to stop alcohol consumption because, you know, it was ruining everything. It was making... It was making men bad and and drinking and all that kind of stuff. It didn't work anyway, so what's the matter? Yes, yes, but why didn't it work? Well, you know, bootleggers, organized crime, uh, speakeasies, people drank more. It's like, you know, whenever you have a little hole in the fence, you say, don't look in the fence. Everybody wants to look there. So here they were, they said you can't drink. Everybody wanted to drink, so more people drank than they drank before that. Wait, wait. So are you saying they finally got rid of it? Wait, can you now buy alcohol in the United States? Yeah, it was the 21st Amendment. They repealed the 18th Amendment. You know, the 21st was after the 18th. That's why it was important. Because uh, one year they did the 18th, later on they did the 21st by repealing the amendment. Repealed it. Re repealed. Yeah. Yeah. Like repealing an apple. Except you don't really repeal that. And Repeal spell different than peel, but otherwise it was the same thing. Well, we're out of time. I think that's all for today. Thank you, Mr. Capone, and we will see you on the next edition of History and You.